Hi guys! So today I want to talk about a very sexy and interesting topic, and that is sunscreens. No, not sexy, not interesting. Okay. In all seriousness, if you're over the age of six months, sunscreen is something that you should be wearing every single day. Now, if you hate sunscreen, I get it. I'm that person too. Up until the last couple of years, I never wore sunscreen. I always knew that I should, but I never did. Anytime I talk to anyone about sunscreen, it's very clear that they don't love to wear sunscreen. Many of them admit that they don't wear sunscreen on a daily basis. They only wear if they go to the beach or to the pool. And again, that's completely understandable. I was in the same boat as you. In my late teens and early 20s, I was a tanning fiend. And for some reason, I thought I had this superpower where <laughs> my skin would never get damaged by the sun. I don't get sunburned easily, at least not in my early 20s. I do get sunburned more easily now for some reason, but in my early 20s, I never got sunburned and in my late teens as well. I would go to Shanghai and the sun ray there would be so strong and I would sit outside for hours without sunscreen on. And then I would come back to the States after summer and I would look like I'm a complete different race. Everyone I meet after I come back will say, are you sure you're Chinese? And I get it, I was really dark. And I loved it. And you know, my skin never had any issues. I will always be very proud that I could tan all day long and I don't get burned and I don't get any sunspots. Little did I know that when it comes to sun damage, it will take anywhere between 20 to 30 years for that damage to show up on your skin. The most apparent of this change to your skin is when you turn mid-30s and I definitely saw that. The minute I turned 35, I swear it's like all the sun damage just slapped me across the face and um, all of a sudden my skin's super dehydrated. I mean it's always been dry but it's even more dehydrated than usual. I have sunspots coming up even though I'm trying to avoid the sun. So it's definitely something that I am now paying the price for. And if you're in your early 20s or your late teens, it's not too late for you. This is time for you to wear sunscreen every single day, regardless if it's sunny outside or it's gloomy. Sunscreen protects our skin from UVA and UVB rays. UV stands for ultraviolet. These rays cause premature aging by creating free radicals. Free radicals are unstable molecules that break down the collagen in our skin, leaving us with wrinkles. Overexposure to ultraviolet rays is also the number one cause of skin cancer. There are two types of UV rays, UVA and UVB. UVA is ultraviolet A rays. UVA has a long wavelength, which means it can penetrate layers of your skin and cause damage to the underlying skin cells. UVA is also the number one cause of wrinkles. Because of UVA's long wavelength, even on cloudy days, it can penetrate and cause damage to your skin. This is why it's very important to wear sunscreen even on cloudy days. UVB is ultraviolet B rays. UVB has a shorter wave, so the damage is more on your epidermis. UVB is responsible for that beautiful tan as well as that nasty burn. SPF stands for Sun Protection Factor. SPF is a gauge that tells you how much protection you're getting from UVB rays. SPF 15 blocks about 93% of UVB rays. SPF 30 blocks about 97% of UVB rays. And SPF 50 blocks about 98% of UVB rays. Any sunscreen that claims to have over SPF 50 is a marketing scheme. The highest protection you can get from UVB rays is from SPF 50. The PA measurement was first created in Japan as a way to measure UVA rays. PA scores range from PA plus to PA plus plus plus. PA rating is very common in Asian sunscreens, but it's just making its way to the States. To me, PA rating is even more important than SPF because it protects you from UVA rays. And as we have discussed earlier, UVA rays can cause much more damage to your dermis than UVB. This is why it's so important to read your sunscreen labels. It should say both UVA and UVB protection. If it has SPF as well as a PA rating, then you're covered. Or it can say broad spectrum, which means you're covered for both. Physical sunscreen, also known as mineral sunscreen or natural sunscreen, 
acts more like a shield, deflecting sun rays from your skin. Physical sunscreen is also that traditional sunscreen you think of that has a thicker texture and takes forever to rub in will leave you with a white cast. Physical sunscreen will protect you from both UVA and UVB rays and it's the ideal sunscreen for people with sensitive skin. Unlike chemical sunscreens, physical sunscreen does not have an activation period, which means you can put it on and be out the door or put it on and apply your makeup right away. There are two main active ingredients in physical sunscreens in the States titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Both of these ingredients are very gentle on the skin. However, there are some people who may experience a sensitivity towards titanium dioxide. In this case, look for sunscreen that only has zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is the least irritating physical sunscreen out there. Titanium dioxide will protect your skin from UVA rays, while zinc oxide will protect you from both. Chemical sunscreen acts more like a sponge, absorbing UV radiation and preventing it from penetrating your skin. This type of sunscreen will not leave you with a white cast, it's easily absorbed and it's more moisturizing than the physical sunscreen. However, for people with sensitive skin, this could irritate your skin. Unlike physical sunscreen, when you use a chemical sunscreen, you need to wait for at least 15 minutes before going outside or before applying makeup. Most chemical sunscreen ingredients only protect either UVA or UVB rays, so you need to have a mix of multiple different active ingredients, or they are now sunscreens that have both physical and chemical ingredients to provide broad spectrum protection. The active ingredients in chemical sunscreens are basically anything that you cannot pronounce. Also, if it doesn't say titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, then you are using a chemical sunscreen. Here are some of the most common active ingredients you can find in chemical sunscreens. The first is avyl benzone. Um, it is the only chemical sunscreen ingredient that covers UVA protection. This ingredient has limited ability to penetrate the skin and has no evidence of hormone disruption. Along with avyl benzone, you will usually see octisolate. This is usually used as a stabilizer for avobenzone. This ingredient is considered safe as it doesn't usually cause any allergic reactions. Then there is homo homosalate, octinosalate, octocrylin. I will list them right here. <laughs> I can't pronounce them. These are ingredients that can cause allergic reactions. These are also listed as hormone disruptors. Because of these reasons, I will not use sunscreens with these ingredients on children. The last and the one you should really be looking out for is oxybenzone. It is the only ingredient you definitely want to stay away from and I will talk more about that later. I'm one of those people that hate that white cast from physical sunscreens. I also really do not like that thick goopy texture from physical sunscreens. So my ideal sunscreen is a hybrid between physical and chemical sunscreen. Now this is a very personal choice because I am a grown woman, I am done having children, and I have no irritation towards chemical sunscreen. But I would never use chemical sunscreen on my children and if I go to the beach, then I will only stick with physical sunscreen because some active ingredients in chemical sunscreen can cause harm to the environment. If you're using the most gentle sunscreen and you are still experiencing irritation or breaking out from the sunscreen, then you may not be removing your sunscreen correctly. Sunscreen is hard to remove. It's almost like foundation. Even on the days I don't use foundation, because I wear sunscreen every day, I still use the double cleanse method. I would highly suggest washing your face first with an oil cleanser before going in with a water-based cleanser. Even if you wear a foundation with SPF, you should still wear an actual sunscreen before applying the foundation. This is because it's recommended that you need to apply a dime-sized sunscreen to your face to fully protect your face from the UVA and UVB rays, but I'm certainly not going to apply a dime-sized foundation to my face, so it's just not going to be enough protection for you. Foundations with SPF is really a marketing thing, and it really just gives you a false sense of protection. So that's basically all the background the research I have done in sunscreen. I will now give you a review on all the sunscreens I have tested. I have 16 of them in front of me. Yes, I know that's a lot of sunscreens. And it's really funny, I did not realize I had this many sunscreens until I was doing research for this video. Um, and I guess I've turned from someone who hates sunscreens into someone who loves sunscreens. 
I'm going to go through these sunscreens not in any type of order, but I will list everything I mentioned below. This is a very highly rated sunscreen on Sephora. It has 4.5 stars out of 700 reviews. This sunscreen has both physical and chemical active ingredients, and it also has ingredients to help sebum control. So this is a great sunscreen for people with oily skin. I like this sunscreen for its watery formula. It's fast absorbing and does not leave me with a white cast. However, I will not be repurchasing this because this is $33 for one ounce, which is really expensive for sunscreen. But if you have oily skin and you can't find a sunscreen that works for you, then I will suggest this one because it does work very well. The next three sunscreens are all from the same brand. This is from the Super Goop Plate brand that you can find from Sephora. I have three different products from them. I've been trying out their products and I bought them in the travel sizes because I was traveling and I thought this would be perfect time to try. And I do really, really love these sunscreens. They are, however, pure chemical sunscreen, so I will not use this on my children. But like I said earlier, I have no irritation to chemical sunscreens. I am not going through um, puberty and <laughs> I'm done having children, so I do really love these sunscreens. The first one is a Super Goop Play SPF 50 with three PA size, which is great. Um, and this is an everyday sunscreen with cellular response technology. This is oil-free and it really is very hydrating for my face. This has a creamy texture, it absorbs quickly. It does leave my skin looking dewy, which I love. The other one I have from them is the Superpower Sunscreen Mousse Broad Spectrum 50, SPF 50 uh, and it's water resistant for 80 minutes. I use this for my body and not for my face. This is in a mousse texture so it's really fun to apply and it absorbs very quickly into my skin. It does not leave you with a white cast. But again, this is a pure chemical sunscreen so I will not use this on my children or on your children. This one I also love. I bought this travel size to carry with me in my purse. Um, this is a spray sunscreen. So when it comes to sunscreen like spray, I will not use this as my initial sunscreen. I will always go in there with a cream or gel formula. What I love about this sunscreen is it's very fast absorbing. It literally, you spray to your face, it literally dries in like seconds. Um, so this one I will actually spray right into my face and it does not mess up with my makeup. So this is literally what I do when I'm in my car. And you just quickly pat it in. And you can see it does not leave any kind of mark and it just gives me a nice touch up throughout the day. I have already talked about my love for Drunk Elephant. I am going to dedicate a video to all their products as well. And this one is no exception. This is a physical sunscreen with 20% zinc oxide. It also contains antioxidants to fight free radicals and marula oil for hydration. This sunscreen is tinted. I suspect the tint is to hide the white cast. But the tint is very very sheer, you will not notice a difference on your skin. The only thing you will notice, it will probably even out your skin tone a little better, which is not a bad thing. They do also make a non-tinted version of this. I have a sample of this right here. Um, it's just called the Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense. It's also SPF 30. The texture between these two are very similar, they are fast absorbing. This sunscreen is a hybrid of both physical and chemical ingredients. It contains titanium dioxide and other chemical ingredients. This gives you maximum protection for both UVA and UVB rays. What I love about this sunscreen is that it's fast absorbing, it's affordable, and it's very moisturizing for those of us with dry skin. In the winter time, this is my go-to sunscreen. The next two sunscreens I will be talking about are both from The Face Shop, which is a Korean brand. Both of these I bought on a whim when I was shopping with my best friend. I was just really attracted to the Simpsons packaging. My main issue with these sunscreens is that because they're a Korean brand, the ingredients are in Korean. <laughs> so I really was not able to find a lot of information around what's in here. I did some research on The Face Shop's other natural sun sunscreen so they have this in the regular packaging as well the normal natural sun sunscreens are uh, physical sunscreens and they have both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide so i'm going to assume that both of these 
our physical sunscreen as well. The one with Marge on here is the Natural Sun Eco Photogenic Sun Blur. So this one gives you a blurring effect to take away your imperfections. It has a little bit of a white cast, but you really can't tell. The other one is the Natural Sun Eco Baby Mild Sunscreen. This one is for kids, and again, because of the physical sunscreen, I am okay with using this on my children. And just like the, the blur one, this one has a cream texture and it's absorbed very quickly. It seems moisturizing. So this is one that my kids actually enjoy wearing. This is a hybrid sunscreen with titanium dioxide and other chemical ingredients. Because this comes in a spray form, I do not use this as my primary or initial sunscreen. This, just like my other Super Goo Play one, this is a touch-up one. So this is another one that I'll keep you know, in my purse or in my car. And this one, unlike the Super Goop one, which dries very quickly, this one does take a little bit longer. So this one I will not spray on my face, especially because, you, I don't know if you can tell, but the nozzle doesn't spray evenly. So I don't know if you can tell. But you can see certain areas get more than the other. So what I like to do is spray my hands pat them real quick and then pat it into my face and then it gets absorbed really quickly I love this one for its convenience it's much cheaper than the super goop play one so I will continue to purchase this one the next two sunscreens are both from the brand Beauty Counter I absolutely love this brand as well um, these two sunscreens are both physical sunscreens. This little one right here is the stick sunscreen with Boss Spectrum SPF 30. This one is like a mini deodorant and I mainly use this on my kids' faces. It just makes it really easy to apply on their little faces. Because it's like a mini deodorant, they find it really fun as well. So this is something that they actually enjoy applying. This one I use on both their face, their body, my face, my body, my husband uses this, everybody uses this. This one is another cream texture, it's more on the watery, lighter cream. It leaves you with the slightest white cast that you really cannot tell in real life. Um, and it just absorbs really quickly, it feels comfortable on my skin, it feels hydrating. I highly recommend this one if you want something that you can use all over. This next one is from Etu House, which is another Korean brand. This is another physical sunscreen. It has a similar texture to the Shiseido one. It's very watery, but for some reason, this one does not leave you with any white cast. This does contain alcohol, so it could be drying on those of us with dry skin. In my research, I have read that this one actually makes a great base for makeup if you have oily skin because it'll control your oil throughout the day. So those of you that have oily skin, looking for a physical sunscreen that won't um, leave a white cast this one is something you should look into and it's very very affordable this one i love for convenience it's mineral sunscreen so it's a physical sunscreen this one has both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide this is another one of those sunscreens that only uses touch up it's not give you enough protection as a main sunscreen but i keep this in my car in my purse um, and when I need to touch up, I just push it up and then the powder will come through the top and I just put this over my face. This one is a physical sunscreen and it has 20% zinc oxide. This is the one I use on my kids the most, especially on their bodies. This one is also very affordable. I have five of these tubes all over my house. Whenever I need them, I just grab one to go. This is a more traditional sunscreen. It's still creamy but it does leave you with a little bit heavier white cast than all the ones I previously talked about. Something that's similar to Think Baby is the Honest Company Honest Mineral Sunscreen. This one has 19% zinc oxide and this one has 20% zinc oxide. They work very similarly, similar texture. I feel like this, the Honest one leaves a slightly heavier white cast than the Think Baby one, but it's not that noticeable, so you can use either on your children. Now we have come to the one sunscreen brand I am warning you to all stay far, far away from. This is the Neutrogena Beach Defense Water Plus Sun Barrier Spray Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 70. So 
right away SPF 70, that's a marking scheme right there. You're not gonna get any more than SPF 50 protection. I know Neutrogena is known as the great sunscreen brand. That really is a testament to their marketing department. Because if you actually look at the ingredients on this, all of Neutrogena sunscreens, aside from their free and pure line, which I believe is pretty new, they're all 100% pure chemical sunscreens. Not only are they chemical sunscreens, they include the active ingredient oxybenzone. There's 6% of that in here. Oxybenzone, as I mentioned earlier, is the one ingredient you absolutely need to stay away from, especially from children. Why? This ingredient has been linked to potential to damage cells that may lead to skin cancer. Not only that, oxybenzone is a hormone disruptor. It has been linked to early puberty in girls, low sperm count and male infertility, and an increase in hormone-related cancers in men and women. What really, really obsessed me the most is in all of the Neutrogena's sunscreens, even the ones that are specially marked for kids, there's oxybenzone in there. That's something I never want to put on my children. What's even worse is that this comes in a spray bottle. So not only are you absorbing into your skin, you're inhaling this as you're spraying it on your kids or on your body, which makes it so much worse. I hope you found this video helpful and educational. I hope it wasn't too boring. As always, I will list all the products I mentioned below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and subscribe so you'll be alerted for my next video. And follow me on Instagram at FatMomLife. See you next time. Bye.